Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today I've been asked to introduce you all to Captain Velvet Meteor, the Jump Plus Dimensions. Thank you here to the developers for sponsoring this video today then, been excited for this one so hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. If you are thinking about picking this up then consider heading to cornershop.gg and use code CORNER at checkout for an additional 10% off what are instant delivery eShop gift cards. This one then it's going to be a tactical adventure game featuring a sizeable cast of jump plus characters and today I'll be breaking down the story, the gameplay, the featured characters and my experience this far. You can also find a link to the eShop page in the pinned comment down below. Story then and will follow a young boy by the name of Damien. He lives in France happily, but he's now being forced to move with his family to Japan that will be residing with his grandma. He's for sure not impressed outside of his manga, he has very little knowledge of this country and wants nothing more than to simply be home, you know, with his friends, his school, all of the things that we would lose at a young age. He's also, however, fortunately extremely imaginative and to cope with this newfound loneliness and anxiety, he creates a hero, a dash of escapism in the form of Captain Felvid Meteor. Now he'll be exploring alien worlds while also exploring the house we now reside in. It's a really unique use of these characters and many of these, we don't see them all of that often which I really enjoyed. So the gameplay it's two segments, we have the tactical battles and then we have some free exploration as well. That's both in the form of a new home location in Japan, you know reality, and then also our spaceship. This spaceship, it acts as a hub location to choose that next mission and to talk to the characters that inhabit your imagination. Exploration though simple enough, we get free movement over Damien and we have simple options to interact with both items in our home and our base. These build upon Damien's world, his passions, a sizeable selection of manga and eventually they bleed over into the combat portion of the experience as well. That's because your family they basically go out shopping, you're left a list of chores to do and these are essentially the I guess turning point in which Damien thinks up that next mission. Think your dog is barking, for example, in the yard, you must console him in his new location. He becomes a mission for Captain Velvet. Likewise, there's food left for you by your mother that's somehow determined to be evil and you must now react. It's a really unique setup that gives us a real picture into the struggles we are facing, but it also adds a dash of relatable depth to the whole experience. Then of course though we get the tactical combat, the Captain Velvet moments of the game and this is no doubt what most will be coming for and I do not blame you. I'm a big fan of tactical experiences myself and this one it has a really strong setup. There's also a dash of almost puzzle of play in here as well, though never difficult as such rather environmental switches, levers, bridges that you need to activate, you know those kind of simple ideas where you just need to uncover the next pathway to that exit. The combat though, you'll be going mission to mission and on each you'll meet a new partner from the Jump Plus world. You'll also have a partner robot that acts as a voiceover to the action and also for navigation. The most unique element for me in here though, we will control both characters individually and yeah, the whole experience is built upon then a grid system. Controls though, they're kept simple, allowing you to simply focus on the tactics at hand and also of course these massive battles. We can move though up to four spaces at any one time, that said, you can also earn 10 additional movement points by taking down your enemies. These are represented under the health bar in the upper left of the screen, those are the blue dots you see, and while I didn't initially maximise these, they for sure become useful as the game builds up in challenge. Attacks then, they are automatic, each character has a standard attack that is represented by a red pattern across the grid. Each character essentially has a different range of attack, whether it might be, you know, width, maybe they can go forward quite a few spaces. For example, a velvet is range because he essentially uses a gun. The princess dashes forward four squares, swinging away. With each chapter, you basically need to quickly translate what does their moveset look like, how do I maximise it? So that example there, Princess, I kept dashing into danger, not thinking about 
where I would land after an attack. I was thinking too short term, you know, I was thinking about the enemy that I was about to slay. It's just something I hadn't had to worry about at this point though in the gameplay. It keeps things incredibly fresh though. Alongside this then, health is a shared meter for both characters, so if that hits zero, it is going to be game over and back to the beginning of that mission. Fortunately though, each character actually gets multiple stages in a chapter, and it's only ever that last checkpoint, so to speak, in the story. Controls though, as I said, simple. We create our path with a tap of the A button, can undo it with a tap of the B. We rotate characters with the right trigger, and we can control the camera by hitting X. Particularly useful because we can zoom in and out, which means it's more than suitable for handheld play as well. There is no kind of camera rotation in here though, that is definitely worth knowing. The game's all about focusing on that combat though, and it actually uses its movement system and character placement to impact what sort of attack you let out. As I said, there's a standard attack for each character, but then alongside this, you also get a special meter above your health bar. You're gonna be collecting a golden orbs to implement this, and to activate it, you need to stand behind each other. You also then get a combo attack. This one, it's a weaker attack, but it hits a large field. That is particularly useful for regenerating health because when you do find yourself in trouble here if you damage your enemies it actually regenerates that shared meter to activate this one you're going to be standing next to each other so far then enemy types we've had those that we can simply step on and get to the bigger threats we've had those that fire those that explode those that bite some screen filling ones as well it's slowly introducing more and more to the fold and i've enjoyed the variety in both their attacks and speed spiked like goop on the floor is particularly painstaking as well and that's taken me some work to figure out Alongside that then, missions have been everything from reach an exit to kill all enemies to escape before a bomb goes off. You get like 10 turns to achieve that. I really like that spin. Then of course as well, each chapter is kept with a boss encounter. It's just a unique use of these licenses, but it really works and it's also then packing enough of a ramp here that it should be enjoyable for all experience levels. On that note though, the licensed characters, let's talk about who's included. So to give you an idea of the cast then, this is all chapter based, as I said each character represents one of these over multiple battles. Known cast members this far though come from Kaiju number 8, Spy X Family, Hell's Paradise, Summertime Rendering, Heart Gear, Slime Life, Tis Time for Torture Princess and Ghost Reaper Girl. I'll list the individual characters as well in the pinned comment down below. Overall though, an incredibly diverse cast, you know Spy X Family is on my list of anime to watch, I'm hearing amazing amazing things about it, but I believe Kaiju number 8 is yet to even get an anime adaption. Visually then and audio wise, no voice acting, but a nice selection of music this far with tracks you can unlock around the world as well. You can play them from the main menu. You also get some attack sounds of course and environmental pieces as well. Then the graphical style, isometric in design, I like what they've done, it's got that kind of anime look to it all but they distinguish between a real world and imaginary with a much more vibrant colour palette. Location wise this far I've seen everything from more forests to pink beach locations. Alongside this as well then, the enemy designs, they've been impressive but particularly the boss encounters these are, or at least so far they've been absolutely screen filling. My favourite part of the design though is actually the pause menu, I really like what they've done, it's a scrapbook page with all of his Captain Falvit adventures and ideas. Here then we can also keep track of collectible stickers and listen to that music that we do uncover. So that's Captain Velvet Meteor the Jump Plus Dimensions and while I know it's sponsored today I will always be transparent with you and I'm a big fan of this particular genre and I think it's a great use of the genre here. I have every intention of making it through the entire game now and seeing the many other characters I'm yet to uncover. To give you an idea actually I'm on chapter 3 currently and to get there it's taken me just short of 3 hours with 8 chapters in total that I'm seeing. That's in the main menu as you are going from you know character to character. 
it's just got a simple look control scheme that works well along the ideas and you can get creative in here without you know the fear of overly convoluted control schemes it just works on the nintendo switch with that though like let me know if this is one you'll be taking a look at and are there any characters in here you're particularly excited to see you can find a link to the eShop page though in the pinned comment below and price wise i'll put that up on screen here again for you all with that then, like it, subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.